how do we start with shadow work? Um, so, and how do we sort of identify the shadow? I've, I've got my own sort of list of ideas and answers, but can I get your take on that? Well, the simple take on it is really, well, it's manifold. Let's get that straight. Nobody can give a, you know, a spinner rack definition of it. But I would certainly say that real shadow work involves the body, right? Uh, okay, so we have a split brain where the left brain is all the ego defenses, right? And, and that exists primarily because of trauma. It started with the ancestral trauma, so we needed something that was like a sensor, a gasket, a sphincter, you know, to, to, to limit it. Otherwise, we were psychotic. And according to Julian James, we were. He calls it the bicameral period. And the only way that human consciousness during the bicameral period stayed together in, in, in some semblance of sanity was because of the instructional voices of the gods. Right? We'll get back to that later. This is our religion, you know, sticks around. Okay, so the, the, then later on as things developed and the traumas, years went by and the trauma lessened slightly, this would be like the late Homeric period. Uh, you know, all, all the Jews, the original Judaism, original Christianity, it's like the life of Brian, right? They were all running around traumatized. That's how you get these bat crazy religions worshiping, you know, Moloch or whatever the hell it was, Jehovah. You know, you get all of that because of this trauma that I'm talking about. As things, you know, sort of improved or whatever, the left brain became the instructional voice of the gods and sectioned off that. Then when an individual is born, it's doing the same thing on the ontogenetic level, suppressing those very emotions of rage and, and uh, shame and self-doubt, you see, and, and deep criticism. And even according, according to Melanie Klein, murderous feelings, right, that the child has towards the parents. Go figure, right? Um, I will be doing podcasts galore on that down the line. But this censoring aspect by pushing things into the right brain the right brain you know has all the memory of all of that right the right brain and then the body is also then in deep communion with that right brain so all the ailments of the body through the polyvagal system we don't want to get into how it's all you know the technique of it it's really through the uh, parasympathetic system uh memorizes or the eastern people would say that it's in the meridians right it's in the actual nadis it's in your cellular makeup you know, like a Bruce Lipton would say, it's in the cellular makeup of your being. It's right there in the DNA. Is the memory not only of the ancient trauma, but all the physical trauma you've experienced as an individual? Well, what this means is that Wilhelm Reich understood this, that the structure of the body, and you had a question I know about chakras and all of that, or one of your members did. See, the way to understand that is not as it's presented in the East. At least for me, it doesn't work at all. Mm -hmm. because it involves too much of a concept of higher and lower, and I'm already super suspicious of that. doesn't mean it's not true, but as far as I'm concerned, any concept of higher and lowers already weakens, right, from an existential metaphysical point of view. You're already on weird ground there. You're on Gnostic ground and theological religious ground, which could be completely false, right? Wilhelm Reich's idea was a, is a sort of a dialogue or conversation between energy more in, the, in this way, from the core of the body to the surface of the body. Now, in the, in the core and in the surface and in the middle area, all of these uh, traumatic memories are kept in the fibers and meridians of the body. So the way that I would recommend people to get into it, it's a very bizarre re you know, recommendation, but you know, I stand by it for, for many, many decades now. And I certainly wouldn't recommend anything I haven't tried myself or researched. And that is that you must start factoring in the body. And whatever way you want to do that is your own gig, right? Uh, it's about getting into physical culture, but I would not, I'm not, I don't mean jogging and weightlifting. I mean, Qigong, Tai Chi, uh, you know, Aikido, you know, things like that, or, or a kind of um, amalgam, right, of, of those with, with, with Pilates and with, uh, you know, a various Hatha yoga. Pre uh, yeah, I, I'm a big believer in that, although you got to watch where you go with that. I mean, when I mean Hatha yoga, I mean staying within you know, that body culture and not getting into some of the other yogas of the East that could, that could bring a lot of trouble because they're essentially Gnostic, which is world denying and body denying and uh, all of that. And we don't want to go there, right? But yeah, within Hatha Yoga, there's some very important practices. But the only thing is that you, your neighbor can be doing the practice without a clue what we're talking about. Un, unaware for 60 years that it's to do with shadow work. Once you've made that connection though, oh my God, the whole thing opens up. You know, so even tapping, you know, all, all of these different things become important now, you know, uh, oh, oh, oh. but, but Tai Chi, um, you know, Qigong, the early, uh, the beginning exercises of Aikido, 
uh, stretching, you know, but you have to do it with, with a consciousness that yeah. this is helping your body release mm -hmm. all of that stuff that the left brain simply will not allow you to bring out because of its defenses, unfortunately. So it's preserving authentic feelings. None of this will work until you realize that what is contained in the body, uh, what we call shadow, yeah. is authentic and it is legitimate. And you're restoring yourself. If, if you don't have that firmly within your mind, what's the point of doing it? It's just like it becomes routine. It becomes a rote thing. It will, oh, uh, here's, that, uh, here's that quote I had earlier. Self-knowledge in Freud's sense is not an intellectual process alone. It is not only knowledge of the brain, but also knowledge of the heart. Erich Fromm, right? Talking about Freud. So there you have it. But when you go to Grodek, right? When you go to Reich, Lawan, Yanov, read those people, read their books. Uh, you know, uh, I know that you've been posting brilliant stuff on, on, on uh, you know, on Reich. Uh, I mean, on uh, Erich Fromm and others, right? And this is very, very imp important to realize that even psychology now, even of a quite technical level, by the way, has accepted that the soma, right, is as important as the psyche. And let's just say that it preserves the wisdom that you lost. So the irritant today, the stress, the feeling I'm, I'm a half a person, something's missing in life, right? It's right here. It's not out there. It's not in the other coming into your life to change you. It's in this thing that you've been carrying, you know, that you just think is a, a vehicle. This, all of the psychic elements are preserved in the body. So that's a long-winded way of saying, come into awareness of the body. It's not knowing. It's awareness. It's mm -hmm. a different, different thing. It's a sense of, and when I, when I use the word sensitization, mm -hmm. I mean, because, yeah, you're not dictating to it. You're sensitized to listen to it. There's a, different, there's a different comportment. Instead of going, you know, instead of dictating, right, which is what we do all day long, now the sensitization is receptivity in which you're listening to the voices of the archetypes, but the archetypes are also uh, present in terms of your soma. This is the key missing thing. Even a lot of Jungians don't get this yet.